Hey guys, what's up? Hey y'all, Ho here with KissAnalog.com. Hey, so today we are going to cover low pass filter, uh, RC filter. Kind of a simple example of a RC filter. And you may be wondering what this is. This is a resistor. <laughs> kind of a cool resistor, right? Um, wow. I haven't seen this guy for a while. 4.8 ohms. I'm not even sure how many watts that is, but that's a lot of watts. Okay, so, hey, back to the filter. I carried away looking at this thing. Uh, so, now this is an RC filter. Just imagine, this is a big old capacitor, big old poly. It's a WEMA, one microfarad cap, by the way. But, let's just say you've got these two things on top of each other, okay? And the voltage is applied from end to end. So they're in series and that's the input voltage applied across these guys, right? And then the output, let's say we take it off of the capacitor. So we're gonna read the voltage right here and send that on. So that's uh, that's our low pass filter, okay? So low pass, so low frequencies goes to the resistor, capacitor looks like an open. So remember, whenever you're like analyzing a circuit with capacitors. Uh, look at it in uh, two ways first. Look at it as a short and an open and see what the circuit does in either one of those two configurations. And then you can kind of, you know, think about what's gonna happen in between those two things. But first, if you know the extremes, like let's say this is a short, well then any frequencies coming through here, nothing's going to the output, it's shorted, okay? So that, that's not gonna pass high frequencies. So it must pass low frequencies. Low frequencies, this guy's gonna look like an open. So when it's open circuit, all the current comes down to the resistor and goes to the output. So that's a low pass filter, okay? So when you think of it like in those terms as the two extremes, then you can graph the two extremes and then the line in between those is something you have to figure out. If it's log, it's single capacitor, resistor, it's 20 dBs per decade, or 6 dBs per octave between those two lines. So now the trick is to find out where that takes place, right? Where, where that uh, open and short kind of, you know, take that turn. That's the cutoff frequency. So I'm going to bring you your notebook and then we're going to look at it on a scope, all right? Okay, let's just do this. Thanks, guys. All right, and so this is our low pass filter. It's essentially a voltage divider. It's our capacitor resistor in series with the voltage source, which is a generator. And this scope probe in the times 10 position is looking at the voltage that the generator is putting in. This other voltage probe is the center tap. It's the, uh, the output, and it's across the capacitor. So at high frequency, the capacitor looks like it's short, so nothing passes through. So that's why it's low pass, because at low frequencies, it looks like an open, and the resistor lets all the voltage go, go here. So, and then high frequencies, this capacitor shorts them out. Okay, so for the filter, uh, plots. I have my voltage probes coming in here. They're both set in the times 10 position. And when I set them up, I just look, make sure they're 10x. I can hit each button, make sure it's 10x back and forth. And then I also check to make sure everything else AC, inverts off, 1 mega ohm. That's always there. Um, yeah, so I just really just check this guy and this guy. And kind of go back between the two and I can check them both. They're, they look both good. I don't need to set up the time base or the trigger because for these plots this application does that. So I come over to the frequency response analyzer and select that and then say yes confirm and then I'm back to this window and now I'm ready to go. Now the setup I think I should still probably be good. See the reference circuit in this case is what I'm going to be doing. I have a filter, device under test. The output will be, you know, in this case the 
voltage divider, the center of the voltage divider, and the input will be the generator. So coming into the input. So output divided by input is gain. And I think that looks good. Okay, so for this case, um, the output will be channel two and input channel one. So output divided by input. Generator, 20 hertz to 100 kilohertz. 2 volts uh, max, that's max, so it'll do, and then the load impedance, so I could set up all these guys, but I've already done that, amplitude, and then, you know, I want to be in high Z, oh look, high Z lets me go to 4 volts, but low lets me go to 2, so I just, I put it in 2, because it's going to be low impedance out here, so I'm just ready to run it now. And here we go for the low pass. Right. So in the last video we did a high pass where the blue, the gain curve came up and it was around 400 hertz. Same kind of frequency as we're expecting the break point here, but we're expecting this blue curve to be kind of just the opposite as well as the red. Started off at uh, essentially 90 degrees, went through 45 degrees, kind of close around 400 hertz and then down to zero. We should see that kind of, you know, flip over and also this guy kind of change. So let's see if I've got everything hooked up and let's go ahead and run it, okay? So here we go. Now again, up here in this window up here, you can see the frequency changing as it scans. All right, that was a little more interesting as far as the phase. It started here at roughly around zero. Here, let's change this scale, make it give us a zero here on this scale. So we're at 15 and we're minus 27. So I'm gonna change this to uh, 30. That should give us a zero. Okay, so now we have a zero up here. Let's see, I can do the same for the, okay, the gain does have a zero. So, uh, the gain actually started off basically zero, and then it rolled off right about 400 hertz, and then dropped down here to, but now the phase was kind of interesting because it started off around zero and it should have gone to 90 and around 45 degrees at four at 400 hertz um, it should have gone through 45 degrees and continued to a, a minus 90 but then it kind of curved back up and also the gain you see it kind of curving a little bit up so I think that's the imperfections of the capacitor, some of the parasitics. Um, it's hitting some, as the, as the amplitude's dropping, it hits the ESR of the capacitor and the capacitor kind of loses capacitance. So then it, and then it just kind of changes and goes the other way. That shows, you know, how this capacitor doesn't really give us the attenuation here at these low frequencies that we would have expected if it would have continued at 20 dB per decade. So that's the low pass. It passes these frequencies around 400 hertz. It starting to attenuate. So, so that's low pass, right? Pretty simple. Um, again, 20 ohm resistor, low value. It kind of shows the imperfections of the capacitor. So you can kind of see that it does matter. You know, it can matter. The type of capacitor you choose for the type of filter. This is a lumen electrolytic, not usually the best capacitor for a filter, so, but it's a good example because it shows imperfections and kind of shows, because you know, it's easy to draw a perfect curve, but you know, it's a little more interesting to see what can happen when you have parasitics that play a part in the uh, filter response. 
So I think that's what we might have saw. And hope you liked it. And it's short and sweet. First example. Thumbs up. See you next time, guys.